Hello children, I hope all of you studied last day's portions and completed your notes. Today we can move to the next topic. What is our next topic? What makes India a federal country? First we can revise what we studied last day, especially the features of federalism. You know that the key features of federalism are there are two or more levels of government, first one. Second one, different tiers of government govern the same citizens, but each tier has its own jurisdiction. Third one, the jurisdictions of the respective levels of government are specified in the constitution. Fourth one, the fundamental provisions of the constitution cannot be unilaterally changed by one level of government. Fifth one, courts have the power to interpret the constitution and the powers of different levels of government. Sixth one, sources of revenue for each level of government are clearly specified to ensure its financial autonomy. And the last one, the federal system has dual objectives to safeguard and promote unity of the country while at the same time accommodate regional diversity. Last day we studied the key features. Now we can analyze Indian federalism. In India, first feature we can just take there are more than two levels of government. You know that in India also there are more than two levels of government. National government is there, state government is there, then local governments are there. So that is the first feature of Indian federalism. There are more than two levels of government. First one, central government, state government and local government. Second one, jurisdiction of the respect levels of government are specified in the constitution. The second one, the jurisdictions of the respective levels of government are specified in the constitution. Because in our constitution, it is clearly provided a threefold distribution of legislative powers between the union government and the state government. We can see three lists inside our constitution. Three lists are union list, state list and concurrent list. First we can study in detail. First one union list, total 97 subjects. Subjects of national importance are included. Defense, banking, currency, communication etc. are examples. The central government alone can make laws relating to these subjects. So you know, union list contains 97 subjects. Subjects of national importance are there. Defense, banking, communication etc. are example. The central government alone can make laws. Second one is state list. Total 66 subjects are there. At present 61 subjects. It includes subjects of state and local importance. Examples are police, trade, commerce, agriculture etc. The state government alone can make laws relating to these subjects. State list contains 66 subjects. At present 61 subjects, it includes subjects of state and local importance. Police, trade and commerce are examples. The state government alone can make laws. Next one is concurrent list. Total 47 subjects. At present 52 subjects. Certain subjects are shifted from state list to concurrent list. So the number of subject in state list reduced from 66 to 61 and number of subjects in concurrent list increased from 47 to 52. Subjects of common interest are there in concurrent list. Examples are education, forest, marriage, trade union etc. Both the central as well as the state government can make laws. If there are laws conflicts with each other, laws made by the union government will prevail. Once again I will repeat, concurrent list, total 47 subjects and at present 52 subjects. Subjects of common interest are there. 
education forest marriage etc are examples both central as well as the state government can make laws if their laws conflict with each other then the laws made by the central government will prevail you know that indian federalism that is a holding together what is the speciality of holding together you know that in holding together federation the central government tends to be more powerful than states so certain cases the central government controls the state governments that is why if any conflicts develops between the central and state government relating to the laws then the union government's decision will be the final now we can move to certain subjects you know for example computer software e-commerce cyber laws these subjects came into being after the constitution was created subjects which are not present in any of these lists mentioned in the constitution are known as residuary subjects subjects which are not present in any of the list what are these lists you know union list state list and concurrent list so that subjects all are included in residuary subjects examples are computer software e-commerce cyber laws etc the central government has the power to make laws in residuary subjects so you know there is a threefold distribution of legislative powers between union government and state government it contains three lists union list state list and concurrent list other than these three list we can see that residuary subjects are there why residuary subjects because certain subjects are not present in any of these list so we call that subjects as residuary subjects and the central government has the power to make laws on residuary subjects examples are computer software cyber laws etc and the next feature is this all state in indian union do not have identical powers for example union territories union territories you know union territories and manikuba lakshadweep etc two more union territories are added now that are ladakh and jammu these territories do not have the powers of a state these territories do not have the powers of a state so listen to our students all states in indian union do not have identical powers for example union territories and these territories do not have the powers of a state so what all points we discussed at present you know first one in india there are more than two levels of government the jurisdiction of the respective levels of government are specified in the constitution thus it contains three list union list state list and concurrent list other than these three list one more is there that is residuary subject subjects that are not included in these three list it is not easy to make changes to this power sharing arrangement any change to it has to be first passed by both the houses of parliament with at least two third majority then it has to be ratified by the legislatures of at least half of the total states for example introduction of gst you know that the first the bill passed in parliament then the bill was sent to you know the state legislatures more than half of the state legislatures approved so that the law was amended so you know the next point is this it is not easy to make changes to this power sharing arrangement any change to it has to be first passed by both the houses of the parliament with at least two third majority because we studied one of the feature of federalism the fundamental provisions of the constitution cannot be unilaterally changed by one level of government such changes require the consent of both the levels of government that point we are explaining here 
it is not easy to make changes to this power sharing arrangement any change to it has to be first passed by both the houses of parliament with at least two third majority then it has to be ratified by the legislatures of at least half of the total state and the best example is the latest one that is introduction of gst first the bill was passed in parliament then they sent the bill to state legislatures more than half of the state legislatures approved so that the law was amended and the next one is this you know that judiciary plays an important role in overseeing the implementation of constitutional provisions and procedures that is one of the feature so in the case of india you know in case any dispute about the division of powers two courts are playing a very important role the supreme court and high court the high court and the supreme court make a decision we can take the example you know kaveri water dispute you all are familiar about this the dispute between karnataka tamil nadu and kerala supreme court passed a final decision so the dispute was solved so we can repeat the point the judiciary plays an important role in overseeing the implementation of constitutional provisions and procedures in case of any dispute about the division of powers the high court and the supreme court make the decision and example kaveri water dispute and the next one is this sources of revenue of each level of government are clearly specified we studied last day the features of federalism the union and the state government have the power to raise resources by levying taxes in order to carry on the government and the responsibilities assigned to each of them so you know that each and every state government that means central government knows very well which all taxes they can collect and state government knows very well which all taxes they can collect so all these are clearly specified in the constitution so we can conclude that all the features of federalism are clearly followed in india now we can just revise what we studied today what topic we studied what makes india a federal country what are the main points first one in india there are more than two levels of government second one the jurisdiction of the respective levels of government are specified in the constitution the constitution clearly provided a threefold distribution of legislative powers thus it contains three lists union list state list and concurrent list union list contain 97 subjects it includes subjects of national importance defense banking communication etc are examples central government alone can make laws state list total 66 subjects are there but at present only 61 subjects it includes subjects of state and local importance police trade commerce agriculture etc are there the state government alone can make laws concurrent list total 47 subjects when constitution was enforced now 52 subjects are there subjects of common interest education forest etc both the central as well as the state government can make laws if their laws conflict with each other laws made by the union government will prevail you know that some subjects came into being after the constitution was created subjects which are not present in any of the list such as union list state list and concurrent list mentioned in the constitution are known as residuary subjects for example computer software cyber laws etc the central government has the power to make laws on residuary subject so next to point it is not easy to make changes to this power sharing arrangement because last day we studied one of the feature of indian federalism was the fundamental provisions of the constitution cannot be unilaterally changed by one level of government any change to it has to be first passed by both the houses of the parliament with at least two third majority then it has to be ratified by the legislatures of at least half of the total states and the next point is judiciary plays an important role and if any disputes arise between the central and state the high court and the supreme court make a decision 
and the last one is the sources of revenue of each level of government are clearly specified the union and the state government have the power to raise resources by levying taxes in order to carry on the government and the responsibilities assigned to each of them so we can conclude that india is a federal country now you can write homework question today only one homework question what makes india a federal country that also be a very important question sometimes some other ways also questions ask another way they can ask question that is the constitution clearly provided a three fold distribution of legislative powers between union government and state government explain or elaborate the statement so you want to write the three list including residuary subjects and there are you can expect more one mark questions from this part and anyway you write one question inside your notebook that is what makes india a federal country today we can conclude here tomorrow we can meet again